Anthony in Madison Heights, Virginia writes, I have been doing some thinking lately. <laughs> Every time I start off a sentence, you know, I've been doing some thinking lately. People here, they run. My wife goes, oy vey. <laughs> but Anthony's been doing some thinking and he says, I know it's dangerous, right? <laughs> Absolutely. If your component's frequency response is only 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, why invest in the things it takes to get audio that plays even 44 kilohertz? I could be overthinking this, but please enlighten me. My speaker's cut off at 22 kilohertz, and it's worrying me that I'm not getting the quality that I'm supposed to. Very discouraging. Well, first off, Anthony, I doubt that your speakers have a sharp cutoff at 22 kilohertz. What you probably see is a frequency response that looks like this, and then it falls off. So out at 30 kilohertz, they're 10 dB down, they're 12 dB down, but they're still extending out, right? And even at 22 kilohertz, they're probably 3 or 4 dB down. So why would we want electronics, speakers, anything to go higher than what it is we can hear? Well, there are a couple of reasons. In electronics, it's really important that we extend it out as far as we can go. Like most of our electronics is flat to about 50 kilohertz. Can we hear 50 kilohertz? No, of course we can't hear 50 kilohertz. But we are very sensitive to phase anomalies. And phase anomalies, called phase shift, your ear is very sensitive to it. So if at some frequency the phase is lagging, meaning that it's slightly out of time with the other signals, your ear picks that up. But that is not discussed when we talk about frequency response. That doesn't show phase accuracy. So a more important specification that we don't do in audio, and we should, maybe PS Audio will start leading the way, is phase accuracy. And the reason I bring that up is because as we start to roll off, the first thing that happens is the phase begins to change, and it changes way down the line. So if you have a roll off at 20 kilohertz, you're affecting the phase down the line in areas you can absolutely hear, like 10K. I don't remember exactly how far down, but you're changing the phase angle relative to the others, and you will hear that. So it's kind of like that old rule of thumb. If, if you need this much, make sure you got that much so that you have some headroom. If you're trying to push your car to go 60 miles an hour, if it only does 65 miles an hour, you've got to pedal to the metal. It's because it ain't it doesn't have much more to go. And you can definitely tell the difference between a car with a top end at 65 miles an hour going 60, as opposed to a car that has a top end of 120 miles an hour, but you're only going 60 still, right? One's loafing, the other's wah! And that's kind of a big deal. So from any number of aspects, headroom, leeway, margin, whatever you want to call it, the more extended it is, the higher the wattage we have, the greater the frequency response, the closer we get to not hearing anything change when the frequencies go up or the sound gets louder. It's, it's, it's just kind of simple. It's just headroom in those terms. Hope that helps. Good luck. Thanks.